Hello good people and welcome back to another math video. This will be a quick review on reducing fractions. Let's get started. We have to reduce fractions when we're asked to put them in their simplest form or lowest terms. These are equal. These kind of mean the same exact thing. And it just means that the fraction is written in the simplest way that it can be written. I'll do a quick example here. Let's pretend that we have a pizza. So here's my 8 cut pizza. And on top of the pizza, I'm going to have some peppers. So here are red peppers on my pizza. And then we might be asked, what fraction of the pizza has red peppers? And we could count this up. There are four slices of red peppers. And there are eight total slices on the pizza. So the pizza is four-eighths red peppers. And that is correct. But that answer is not in the simplest form or in the lowest terms. So we might have to think about, well, how much of the pizza is in red peppers uh, in terms of like a really simple fraction? So the simplest way to express this fraction would be to say that half of the pizza is red pepper and half of the pizza is not red pepper. And we can see that kind of here when we outline it. But we can also do that with calculation. I have 4 eighths here. And I could say that 4 eighths is equivalent to 1 half. And how would I get there? Well, I could do some calculation and say I can divide the top by 4. And I could divide the bottom by the same number so that things remain equal. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. And 8 divided by 4 is 2. And there's my 1 half. So I showed it in a picture, but then we also showed the calculation. Hershey bars. Well, Hershey bars are also great for doing fractions. And the reason why Hershey bars are great for doing fractions is if you look closely at a Hershey bar, you'll see that it is split up a few different ways. And a Hershey bar is split up like this. So I could have a Hershey bar, and I could say that my friend is going to have this much of my Hershey bar. And how much does my friend have? Well, my friend has 3 twelfths of the Hershey bar. This is correct. There are three pieces there that I shaded in yellow, and there are 12 total pieces. So my friend has 3 twelfths of the Hershey bar. However, this is not in simplest form. The simplest form, or lowest terms way to think about it, would be to say, well, really, I'm giving my friend this whole chunk of my Hershey bar. How many chunks are there that are like that? There's one. There's another. There's another. And there's another. So really, there are four whole chunks, and I gave my friend one of them. So my friend got one out of the four. These fractions are equal. These are equivalent. And I can reduce the 3 twelfths by dividing the top and the bottom by the same number. And that would be 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. Showing me that 3 twelfths and 1 fourth are equivalent. And 1 fourth is the simplest form. All right. Here's a practice problem. We did a few with pictures. And I love pictures, but they do take some time. So what if we just did the straight calculation? Well, here's 4 and 20. And I might want to reduce this fraction and think, how could I do this? Well, there's a few different ways you could do it. But you might just notice that 4 and 20 are both even numbers. And any even number can be divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 20 divided by 2 is 10. We have reduced the fraction, but not all the way, because I'm left with another fraction that has even numbers. So I could divide this by 2 again. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. So this is my fraction in simplest form, lowest terms. And just a little side note, any time you have a fraction that has a 1 on top, it's not going to get any simpler. That's it. Here's the same problem, but I'm going to do it slightly differently. You'll notice that I had to do two steps. I divided by 2 here, 
and that reduced it a little bit, but not all the way. So I had to divide by 2 again. The reason is I did not use the greatest common factor. So if you can come up with the greatest common factor between these two numbers, you can get there in one step. And the greatest common factor between 4 and 20 is 4. So if I divided both 4 and the 20 by 4, I could get there in one step. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. Let's look at another one. How about 9 27 So, if you don't know what to do, you might look at this and say, well, maybe I'll just try dividing by 2. The problem is, neither of these are even numbers. So dividing by 2 isn't going to work. So if you have no idea, and dividing by 2 doesn't work, my next suggestion would be to try dividing by 3. And we can divide this one by 3. 9 divided by 3, that'll work. And 27 divided by 3, that will also work. 9 divided by 3 is 3. And 27 divided by 3 is 9. We've reduced the fraction, but not all the way, because they can both be divided by 3 again. So we have to go through that process one more time. 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 9 divided by 3 is 3. Again, if we had figured out that the greatest common factor between 9 and 27 is actually 9, then we would get to that same 1 third, but we'd get there in one step. But again, either way is fine. Okay, well, that was just a quick little review on reducing fractions. Hope that helps, and you can have a great day.